Of course, there's never enough of night light, so let's just use some box from a broken charger or some dodgy charger, which is too dangerous to use, and some fragment from some broken car light or motorcycle light. I'm really not measuring anything, just eyeballing it. I got out a fragment of the car light and cut a hole in this box and it will soon fit nicely. That's going to be the housing for my trash night light. This is when every time you're walking your dog, all the rubbish from the street somehow ends up in your pockets. And pieces of blank circuit boards somebody just threw away. The board is cut to the size and cleaning it. Also making a test board to compare some LED candidates. It's interesting that a phosphor yellow LED is much more efficient than a standard yellow, but it doesn't apply to phosphor red LEDs. A phosphor red LED is about as efficient as the standard one, maybe actually slightly less because it has a higher voltage drop. The phosphor red on the right side produces about the same amount of light as the standard red one, the better one on the left side. The phosphor LED also has a slight pinkish tint. There's a little bit of blue leaking from it, which I don't want. That's the board. Putting the LEDs in place. And of course soldering them using what else than this. A little bit of testing. One out of four LEDs is yellow, just like this ratio. It produces a very nice color, orange. Just like this post-apocalyptic soldering technique. No matter how horrible it looks, it actually works. Row 4, row 5, not a single LED was harmed in this process. Let's put a bridge rectifier on it. Mounting it onto the plug. It's soldered onto the plug and it goes two series resistors. One would be enough but to spread the dissipation better. Of course the rosin from the LED is cleaned using ethanol. So they are clean now nicely. And of course testing time. Nice! The box has this glue on it. And let's put it in it. And test it with it. Super nice! And the simple schematic of it. Just a resistive dropper, the bridge rectifier and the LEDs in a series. And the LEDs in total drop about 40 volts, so it's not very efficient. Most of the voltage is actually dropped on the resistors, and most of the power goes into the resistors, not the LEDs. They're significantly brighter than a small night light needs to be, so let's add a dropping capacitor here. Even if everything's shorted, the power rating of the resistors isn't exceeded, and the temperature of the resistors and the temperature of the box is acceptable. This simulates the worst thermal scenario. If the dropper capacitor shorted and the LED source the bridge rectifier also shorted, the entire mains voltage would be on the resistors and they would have the highest power dissipation. And the capacitors added 10 nano, 1000 volts. Now it's much dimmer but also much more efficient. It only draws 45 milliwatts, out of which 25 milliwatts go into the LEDs and 20 milliwatts lost mostly in the resistors a tiny bit lost in the bridge rectifier and the dissipation factor of the capacitor. But capacitors can drop AC voltage with virtually no losses. Of course I could reduce the value of these resistors to make it even more efficient, but then if this capacitor shorts, they might overheat or make the box too hot. A capacitor can short, but it's very unlikely for resistors to short. So instead of having a fuse here, the resistors are the last resort if the capacitor is shorted. And having most of the voltage dropped on the capacitor, the higher the resistance of the resistors, the more dissipation in them, but if the capacitor shorted, it's the other way. The less resistance, the more dissipation in the resistors. And that's because with the capacitor having most voltage on it, it's almost working as a constant current source, and in this condition a higher resistance means more dissipation. 
But if the cap is shorted, the resistors have almost a constant voltage on them, and then in this condition a lower resistance means more dissipation. And also these resistors have to have a high enough resistance to limit the inrush current of this capacitor. In this very simple light there is no smoothing capacitor here. In case you have a smoothing capacitor, the smoothing capacitor can absorb the inrush energy of this capacitor, so the inrush current doesn't go through the LEDs. But with no smoothing capacitor, the entire inrush current goes through the LEDs and so the inrush limiting resistor or resistors have to have a higher resistance. And this circuit only draws about 0.68 mA, and with this capacitor shorted about 4.5 mA, and the lowest common rating of a fuse is 32 mA, rarely 20 mA, so there's not much point putting a fuse here, unless resistors can fail a short circuit. Short circuit failures are common for semiconductors, capacitors, but definitely not for resistors. Of course it also depends on the type of the resistor, doesn't it? I spontaneously decided to make one more out of these chargers. These were about identical sized boxes. I cut one diagonally and here is the plug for it and the LED board will go in here. And the LEDs on the board and the bridge and a 56 kilo ohm power resistor and a 4.7 nano capacitor, 6 kV. Let's try to mount it somehow in it. The board is connected to the plug here. It goes into the box and... Testing time. And it works nicely. And this slightly foggy frosted piece of plexiglass could be actually the cover for it. Nice. It goes on it. And that's it. It was a bit too yellow, so I went from 8 to 6 yellow LEDs and cleaning the rosin using some ethanol and some trash toothbrush. It looks much nicer when it's clean. Of course, you could also use a fusible resistor. Some random data sheet of fusible resistors, they seem to go up to 10 kilo ohms. And the fusing characteristics, does the power rating of the resistor have to be exceeded by the factor of 16 for it to work as a fuse? Bloody hell! Of course you can use a fusible resistor or its combination with some other resistor in series, but also to make it safer you could use a Y1 capacitor here. The question is, is a Y1 capacitor better than a 6 kV capacitor? But at least a Y1 capacitor is kind of a way of outsourcing the responsibility here. And I forgot to mention I filled this hole in it using a baking soda and a super glue. And maybe instead of a 10 nano 1 kV capacitor I'm going to put two parallel 4.7 nano 6 kV capacitors here as a safety factor. And of course whether a resistor can fail a short circuit is a philosophical question. Of course resistors have a voltage rating. Generally the more power the more voltage rating. Or the physically longer the more voltage rating. Of course if you put two resistors in series the voltage divides. So for safety of course a bigger resistor is better. A resistor in series with the neon indicator of this switch is basically a tiny water water resistor. Nothing else in series, no fuse or anything, just the neon lamp. A comparison to a two water resistor. Have you ever seen the resistors in these neon screwdrivers? They're about the same size, just a quarter water resistor. The only thing between you and mine is basically this small resistor and the neon lamp which is basically a constant voltage drop and no current limiting capability. If resistors could easily fail a short circuit this would be an absolute death trap, wouldn't it? But I haven't seen yet a shorted resistor in my life. But of course if it's massively overvolted it could arc over. And also all these things are a neon lamp in series with a tiny resistor connected to mains with no fuse. So is it unsafe to connect something to mains via two bigger resistors and a capacitor in a series or even a bigger resistor plus a capacitor in series? And especially if the capacitors are 6 kV. And just for a perspective the neon lamp in this one draws about 70 mW and in this one about 120 mW. Whereas this is 45 mW and this one is just 20 mW. And this one draws 300 bloody milliwatts for a tiny indicator. This one now has the two parallel 6 kV capacitors for more headroom. Just a side note, these film capacitors are typically quite accurate and they don't have much thermal drift. Heating it with my finger and it doesn't change. The accuracy of this ceramic capacitor isn't really the greatest and when I put my finger on it and heat it, you can see the capacitance counting down. That's a thermal drift. And this draws about 35 to 40 milliwatts. And this is about 20 milliwatts, which is less than a neon indicator. So we can just plug them in and leave them plugged in for years and not worry about the consumption. 
and even at such a super low power, they produce enough light so you can walk through a small room or bathroom or hallway. It can light your step nicely and of course it's facing down. You're plugging it in this way so it lights under your feet, doesn't shine into your eyes. This one's also supposed to be plugged in this way so it's facing down, even though you could also plug it in this way if you wanted. And if you're screaming the capacitor should have a discharging resistor and you're getting a zap from the plug, well, it's such a low capacitance that it doesn't really do anything. But for anything more than about 10 nano, maybe 22 nano, you should definitely use a discharging resistor. But the energy in this one seems harmless. Are these really compliant here or just slipping through mixed with normal screwdrivers? But anyway, that's my super low power night lights. We will keep testing them for some time and then the only thing left is to glue them together permanently. There's really no other way of making this type of a housing stay together. And this orange cover actually shifts the light color closer to red, but it's also definitely more lossy than this cover. But I like its mysterious appearance. It's not completely clear through it that it's LEDs in it. That's it, and if you like my videos, please consider supporting this channel on a Patreon, using the thanks button and subscribing. And big thanks to all of you who already support me. Without your help, such an odd channel couldn't exist.